Hello there, everyone. I'm Benny. This is the Fumanity Channel. And today's video is gonna be slightly different. I feel like every one of my videos will start out with this uh, energy drink here. Don't mind it though. You see, every time I go to the city, or every time I go out, I just buy one of these and have the day started, you know? Well, just a little bit of a, a weather uh, report. Today's uh, kind of cloudy and also really windy. So I'm uh, sorry if the audio quality is gonna suck on this video because, well, I don't really have a chance to record it again. I have to edit this video today and upload it today. Not because uh, I'm behind, but uh, because today is a special day, uh, as it is both my name day uh, for my second name. It's uh, March the 15th today, which also means that it is a national holiday in Hungary, and I really wanted to talk about it. But uh, we have a slight problem. Uh, while I was coming here to uh, today's location, I... Uh, uh, on another square, we ran into a really official looking group who were doing some sort of, uh, you know, uh, paying respect, sort of pressing F as our national heroes sort of thing. And by the time I made it here, they made it here as well. I'm, I'm really happy. Like, there's only like three squares in this entire town that are like uh, an homage. I'm gonna wait here a little bit, drink my energy drink, and. Uh, well, I'll, I'll wait for them to leave and they've been here for like the better half of 10 minutes and they don't look like they're leaving soon so yeah uh, talk to you then okay well it seems like the people have left which is uh, great for me so what happened what is today's topic well uh, it's a story of uh, a few hundred years back. Uh, we're talking 1848, which if you're European, you would know what that year signifies in uh, European history. And uh, that is the year of revolutions. Throughout the entirety of Europe, uh, I think starting from Sicily all the way to, well, Hungary, uh, a lot of nations started to uh, rebel against their monarchies. And, uh, well, Hungary was one of them. If you didn't know, Hungary used to belong to... Well, I think... I just switched up the angle. <laughs> it should be better. Jesus Christ, I'm stupid. Uh, let me... No, oh, it's, it's working. Good. So, uh, now that I switched up the camera angle, uh, let's get started, really. So, if you didn't know, Hungary uh, back then was uh, a part of uh, the Austrian Empire, uh, led by the von Habsburgs, which name you might have heard before in your history studies. And uh, in 1848, um, well, that was the point where Hungarians decided that it's not going to cut it. This, this way is not the best way to, for a country to be ruled. Well, that's not entirely true. Uh, whilst in most countries, uh, for example, in France, that was true. In Hungary, we didn't want independence. Well, mostly. Most uh, Hungarians at that time just wanted more autonomy, more freedom, if you will. So, March the 15th, 1848 is uh, the day... Oh, Jesus Christ, the wind! So that day... A bunch of uh, university students, about the ages, age of myself, which, well, in high school they were like, you know, grown adults that I learned of. But now I'm thinking it's just the same group of people as I like hang out with. And that, that's kind of weird to think about. But that's not today's topic. The topic is that they gathered in a cafe and they were like, nah fam, Austria, you're doing it wrong. We don't like it. Let's change it a little bit. 
So they came up with a, a bunch of bullet points. Uh, we learned of 12 of them. I think there were more, just a tad, tad bit more, but uh, they were simplified later on and uh, made into 12 really straightforward points that they wanted and we learned of them. Uh, if I find them, I'll put up a translation now. Good. Well done, Danny, in the future. Oh, well, so, thanks, mate. Uh, there's people coming, I don't like that. They, uh, at that time, they didn't do much. Well, at the beginning of the day, didn't, the day did, didn't. Uh, that's a tongue twister. So at the beginning of the day, they didn't do too much. Oh, this is a great shot, I love it. <laughs> so, what they decided to do was uh, to get a, a couple of uh, political uh, prisoners, I, I think would be the best way to translate it as uh, out of prison. So they did. Uh, they uh, got their hands on the press. They went to the, the main press, I think, in Budapest at the time. And they literally just hijacked the place. And uh, they printed everything they wanted, a, a lot of handouts, a lot of, uh, well, those uh, bullet points that I was talking about uh, before. They uh, printed those out and uh, they handed that, them out to the public. And they gathered in front of, uh, Oh, I might be wrong on this one, but I think the National uh, Art Gallery in Budapest, and they, uh, well, they riled up the masses, I think is the, <laughs> well, <laughs> that was an unnecessary American accent there. I guess when I think of uh, freedom, America is the first thing that comes to mind. Well, they did that, and uh, the same day, a bunch of people just left for uh, Vienna and they confronted the uh, emperor of the time, uh, Ferdinand I von Habsburg, who was, uh, well, to put it lightly, he was kind of crazy. <laughs> not, not in the wrong way, but like the mental problems way. He wasn't entirely mentally capable of leading an entire empire and uh, a bunch of uh, huge political figures confronted them, or confronted him on that day, and uh, they made him declare freedom for Hungary. And, uh, well, that didn't last long. Next year, in May, uh, I think in May, in, 19, in 1849, the Austrians attacked Hungary and uh, reclaimed the entirety. So it wasn't a, a long uh, freedom, but it was enough uh, to change the views of a bunch of other politicians at the time. And um, well, eventually, uh, just two decades later, we didn't get freedom, but uh, we got the autonomy that we wanted. Uh, the emperor of that time, uh, Franz Joseph, was crowned the king of Hungary. And, uh, well, he went down in history as the granddad of Hungary or something like that. He was the, uh, well, the most beloved ruler that we had in Hungary after that. Which is really weird because he was the emperor of Austria from 1848. The same year that the revolution started and just a year before he decided to attack us. And then he became our favorite ruler. Everyone just loved him, apparently. He was the ruler of Hungary until 1906, I think. Maybe a few years later. I can't exactly remember. He, he was basically the king of Hungary until almost World War I. Fun fact, if you didn't know, it was partly Hungary's fault. World War I. Partly, not entirely. Here I am at uh, a square that we call uh, which is a, a common trope in Hungary. It means the square of 48. Uh, 48 as in 1848. On March the 15th, 15th we done these. Uh, we call them kokarda. I don't know the English word. Here it is on screen. I'm 
too lazy to look it up now. I would have to stop the recording and... Uh, uh, you know what? Well, I looked it up. I found two words. One of them being uh, cockade, which sounds weird, and the other was uh, rosette. I think would be the better word. I think that's uh, from French, because they came up with the idea in their revolution of uh, 48. Or, man, uh, it was a couple of years before. But uh, they, they did the same thing. And, uh, well, actually, uh, funny thing. This person over here, uh, well, he was the one who wore this for the first time, at least according to the anecdote. Well, not an anecdote, it's a story that's been passed down for generations. And probably this is going to be the title of this episode because it's the most uh, clickbaity title I can think of. Apparently, according to the story, his wife was the first one to make it for the Hungarian revolutionaries. And he also fought in the war, and he was essentially the leader of those university students. One of the most famous Hungarian poets, actually one of my favorite poets, called uh, Petőfi. I, uh, I heard once that, uh, apparently in English, you also learn about it to some extent. So I heard that you also learn about him under the name of... Uh, Something ridiculous like pedophile, which sounds not that good. I hope that once I get a partner program, I won't be demonetized for this word. Uh, and uh, yeah, his uh, apparently his wife made the first one, and ever since then, every year, March the 15th, we wear these. This is the Hungarian flag, as you could see before. Over there are a couple of clips before. Well. Technically, two clips before of this. Yeah, we've been wearing these for the past almost 200 years. Every March the 15th, every year, we wear these to commemorate our fallen heroes. By the way, he, he over there, statue person over there, he died uh, apparently in 49. No one found his body. And uh, it's one of the biggest uh, mysteries in Hungarian history is uh, people are trying to find his final resting place. They say that uh, some, uh, some soldiers saw him run away from the battlefield in 49, which is uh, his official death date, uh, somewhere in April, I think, or June. Some, somewhere, no, not April, um, somewhere in May or June. Uh, we don't really know. We don't really know anything about him after that. He might have died on the battlefield. He might have run away to Russia, to Siberia, according to some people. <laughs> it's a common theme that I've seen. I read up on his death, and uh, no one really knows where he died. Uh, a couple of years ago, someone claimed that they found his body in Siberia. That's why I said Siberia. But uh, upon closer inspection, it was a... Uh, it was a, a, a female skeleton that they found. That's the story bit for today. I think this will be a shorter video altogether. And uh, I'm really glad I, I could record this this easily. I had to wait a long time though. But I have to edit this video today and upload it by like, I don't know, 5 p.m. Right now it's uh, 10 a.m. So I, have, I still have plenty of time to edit this video, but I don't know if the quality will be good enough and... Uh, well, I'll have to do a couple of uh, edits before then. Also, translations, apparently, thanks me. Oh, thanks me of you're the welcome. Past like 10 minutes ago, 5 minutes ago, whatever it was. Yeah, so... I guess uh, that's it for today. Uh, you know your job, you know your YouTube duties as a viewer. I'm, as I said before, I'm not going to say them because I hate to say it. It sounds cliche and it's annoying most of the time. So uh, here it is on screen, right here usually. Do these things. Also, if you, uh, if you would like to see me cover any other historical content or uh, Hungary-related content or Hungarian history-related content or whatever, uh, tell me in the uh, description down below, you know, just leave a comment there, as, uh, as per usual. So, yeah, it was me, uh, the b-boy of the Fuhumanity channel, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.